All right, so I just got back from a trip to Idaho testing out the Canon SL2 for vlogging. And it was a super random day full of meeting up with entrepreneurs. I think there's gonna be some broken knees. Ah! Like so many people here make it a little bit and get fancy. And breaking the world record for the largest game of bubble soccer. Let's go! Let's break some records. <laughs> Let's check it out. What is up guys, Sean here, and this is my official test and review of the Canon SL2 for vlogging. And I've actually posted the time codes to this video in the top YouTube comment. And you can click those to skip anywhere you want in the video in case you wanna skip around in the vlog and or just skip to my thoughts and conclusion and review of the Canon SL2 for vlogging. So check those out at any time. Let's jump into the video. What is up, Sean here, and in this video, I'm gonna be testing out the Canon SL2 for vlogging. Let's go. Now, of course, one of the cool features of the Canon SL2 is the ability to shoot 60 frames a second in 1080p, meaning you can get smooth slow-mo footage. Now you might be wondering why go to Boise, Idaho, right? Kind of seems a little bit random, but the reason was for this influencer party hosted by Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels. We made it. Nice Chris in the building. Although we're outdoors, Benji Man TV, we're here. Idaho, rental car, let's go. Now for this entire vlog, I was basically using two lenses. First of all is the kit lens, the 18 to 55 that comes with the SL2, and then also the 10 to 18, which is a wide angle lens. And I like this wide angle lens the most for just typical vlogging because it gets such a wide shot, but the wide angle lens is a little wide for B-roll and other shots. So that's why I like the 10 to 55 because you can get a lot closer up. Mr. Russell Brunson! So this entire event was actually at Albertson Stadium and it was super cool because I got to connect with a lot of entrepreneurs, creators, video influencers, and I even got a few of them to share some tips. Yeah, to me the secret to hacking this, uh, like the video world, in my opinion, is be true to the message of your heart. I think we all have a unique voice that wants to be voiced through us. If we can do that in a way that's entertaining, inspiring, and or brings more self-awareness to people, I think that's a big hack. What I would say is excuses don't excuse you. And remember that the gun that kills the most people is the gunna. Everybody says they're gonna do this, gonna do that. Stop saying you're gonna, that's killing your dreams. Instead, take action now. Keep following this guy, that's what I'd say. <laughs> That's my man. Now, in addition to vlogging, the SL2 is also super easy to shoot photos with. And it was super cool at the event to be able to connect with a lot of old friends, as well as mentors, and be able to take quick and easy selfies that were high quality. And so there was a lot of great content, some great food, a chance to network and hang out with people. But then the highlight for me and probably everybody there was Gary Vee's keynote, dropping fire as usual. It's the same shit over and over. There's underpriced attention and there's overpriced attention. There's headline readers and there's practitioners. Let me give you an example of headline reading versus practitioners. Headline readers, Snapchat's dead. Practitioners, holy f Snapchat's ad product is so underpriced because everybody thinks it's dead that it's $2.80 CPM to get in front of everybody who's under 30 in the world, and at least in the US world and a couple other countries, and holy sh yeah, the swipe up conversions of these people since they live in that world are so incredible. There's no platform on earth, not YouTube and Facebook combined, that can get somebody under 30 to watch a three minute video continuously, even remotely close to Snapchat, and it's $2.80 a CPM. Practitioners, versus headline readers. And this is a pretty fucking legit audience, and I know a lot of you, and I watch a lot of everything, and there's just a lot of people who headline read. There's a whole lot of people who have a whole lot of opinions about a whole lot of shit in here, and they've never done that thing. Thank you, man. And as usual, he did Q&A, and I was able to ask a question about his current Facebook and YouTube strategy. Hey Sean. Gary, uh, you just came back from August and you said I'm bringing YouTube fire, new shows are coming out. Yep. And you took the Ask Gary V show to Facebook only. I did. So what are your latest strategies and why for both YouTube 
and Facebook. I think you have to make content that is native to the platform to put it out on. I've always thought about that. I wrote a book called Jack Cabaret Hook five years ago on this. I wasn't doing that. So now that the Ask Gary Vee show is on Facebook Watch and the Daily Vee is on YouTube, when D Rock is where the fuck D Rock? Okay. <laughs> you know, now I can say, what's up, YouTube? Whereas I couldn't do that before, and those little nuances matter. In, you know, all the action is in those little edges. And so I broke them up mainly because of Facebook video. Now that there's watch, I'm fascinated. Any of you watch a show yet on Facebook? Watch, just raise your hands, just curious. Higher, right, so this intrigues me. Like, everybody here has to watch one. Not because, like, I don't watch I'm not, I watched one, the LeVar, the Ball family, because I just wanna see what the fuck they're doing. Like, to me, this is the most interesting thing that I'm doing that the good market isn't. You've gotta taste everything. Like, if you wanna win, and fuck, there's no way you're fucking Boise, Idaho if you don't wanna win right now. <laughs> So like to me, 19 hands, which means maybe 31 because people get shy, two weeks into Facebook Watch that haven't watched, that's, that's where I play. That's my margin. So that's why I did it, because I wanted to make them native. I have two active shows. I needed to do something on Facebook. And because I watched Facebook, actually, okay, I'll tell you, it's not fully announced yet, but we'll see how this goes. Um, <laughs> because I watched Watch, and I watched it for four, you know, kind of like four days in a row, looked, I understood what the they were doing, so I sent them an email, I pitched them a show, and they bought it, right? So now I'll have kind of, anybody can put a show on Facebook, right, like a page, a watch page, which everybody should be doing here. I'll have my YouTube, you know, show, and now I'm gonna have a produced by Facebook show that's gonna get big, big, even more. Listen, man, I talk and like do it and hustle and all this, I just, like, I do so much more than I talk, which is fucking crazy, because my mouth is always running, but I'm just doing. I'm doing, 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 because I'm tasting, I'm tasting. I never think I'm fancy. So many people in here, and I know you, like, so many people here make it a little bit and get fancy. Stop, stop doing the shit that got them there. That's the minute you're fucking dead. Thank you. Got it. Good session. Time for dinner. But after all of that, things actually took a strange left turn and we actually headed down to the blue Smurf turf to try and set the Guinness Book of World Records for the largest game of bubble soccer in history. All right, what a day. Session's over, but now we gotta go play bubble soccer. It's about to get real weird. Change it to some official gear. Let's go. Kick, high kicks. Whoa. Hi, Chris. Nice Chris. I'm Chris. Nice Chris. What's up? <laughs> And he's actually going to explain the rules. Turning for the people in the background, what do you think about what's going on here? I uh, have Darryl? no idea what's going on. This is pretty <laughs> nuts. So you remember that one time when we played bubble soccer with Chris Record and Billie Jean? What's up? Yeah, you know, just things that we do. This There's a lot of existed. bubbles out here, man. There's a lot of bubbles out here. Just go for people's ACLs. I don't care about kicking the ball, Sean. Yeah. I care about tearing ACLs, complete tears, ruptures. That's what I'm going for. Right. <laughs> this breaks the record. And we did it. Guinness Book of World Records set. My team won, by the way. And then a freestyle rap battle broke out on the field. Feeling all the vibes and I wonder Woo! Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Right now, yeah. What's up? Yeah. You're going viral. I can never stop. Yeah, we're going so viral. Yeah. Told you it was an interesting day. But let's get into my thoughts on the Canon SL2 for vlogging specifically. Now I've actually done a full review video of the camera and you can check that out on the YouTube card. I'll link it up in the description below. But I wasn't really speaking to it for vlogging specifically. And so my thoughts, if you were wanting to use this for like running gun shooting, just like the video clips you just saw, I think number one, it's super easy to use. That's one thing I love about Canon is that it's super user friendly, very dependable, fires up fast, quick and easy to use. The selfie screen, you know, is a must uh, feature for a lot of vloggers, definitely wanting that. And just simple things like being able to tap your face for focus or easily adjust the menus and navigate the camera. 
very easy. You know, secondly, this camera is super light. And so even with a few accessories, this is a Joby Gorillapod SLR zoom. This is the Rode Mic uh, Pro Plus version. A little bit big and kind of overkill, but it's a new mic that I wanted to test out. You could use any mic pretty much on here because it has a mic input. But when you add it all up together, it's almost weightless. And so what's nice is you get DSLR quality without it getting super heavy. And that goes into the lens choice as well. But like I said, this wide angle lens and the kit lens, both are what I used in this vlog and they're very light as well. And actually, by the way, I'll actually include a list of all the gear and the accessories and the mics and the extra batteries and everything else that I mentioned in this video in the YouTube description below if you wanna check any of that stuff out. Now, thirdly is battery life. Now, during the day, I only had to ch change the battery once and I actually filmed Gary's entire session probably for 30, 40 minutes straight in addition to all the other footage at the beginning of the day. And that was about the time that I needed to change the batteries. So the battery life is amazing, especially compared to a lot of other cameras out there and I also invested in this kit of these two aftermarket batteries now those can be hit or miss but I'm happy to report that these work great they came with a little charger I don't know how to say this brand a, a, a Proda or something like that I'll link these in the description below if you want to check them out I didn't even get to the third battery I got two of these aftermarket ones and then just the normal Canon one but the battery life is pretty impressive and then of course one of the things that Canon is known for is autofocus and it has the dual pixel autofocus so it's absolutely incredible at face tracking and the two few features I use for vlogging is I use face tracking really quick when I'm running run and gun and shooting like this and wanting to track a face or wanting to track somebody else's face. If I'm shooting B-roll, I just quickly touch the cue and I switch it to the smooth zone AF and then you can just tap regions really easily. Even if you're shooting from the side trying to shoot a speaker or something and it couldn't really track their face, that basically covers you. So it's between those two AF modes that um, I shoot pretty much everything with the SL2. And then as far as my settings go for this vlog, I shot on manual, I had it on camera mode. And then the settings I like to use is I always have the aperture as wide as it'll go. I shot in um, either 60 shutter speed when I was shooting 30 frames a second, or I would kick it up to 125 on the shutter when I was shooting 60 frames a second, which is just following the multiple rule. So you get really smooth footage. And then I would put the ISO on auto so that from room to room, it could change lighting really easy. So it takes a little while. You could certainly get away if you're just starting on like an auto mode. Mode, but I've been shooting video for a while, so manual is pretty comfortable for me, and I like those micro adjustments over everything. Now, as far as low light goes, I did definitely notice some grain, and I'll show some clips here where you can see some of that grain. That's probably not as much as fault of the camera. This is an APS-C sensor, and so it's more a fault of the lenses. You know, this kit lens starts at f4. This uh, wide-angle lens starts at f4.5. So if you really wanted to get some good low light shots, you might want a faster lens. However, you know, you can still get away with uh, footage that I would say is usable, still looks all right with just this setup or if all you had was the kit lens, you could still get away with it. And then I know this is about the SL2. And as I said, you could use any microphone because you do have the mic jack. But just a quick thought on the Rode Pro. I love this feature right here. I'm gonna do a full video about it. But check this out, camera off, boom. The mic just powers down on its own. Camera on, boom. The mic just fires up on its own. Now, I use the Rode Pro, the old version in the past, and I would just be killing nine volt batteries because I would always leave the mic on. So not only does this have a rechargeable battery with a much longer battery life, but just a cool feature in this particular setup. And it is, you know, the mic's like bigger than the camera, but it's really not that heavy. So this is actually a pretty rad setup. And I love that because you just didn't have to worry about the powering the mic on and off. It just is always, you know, synced up with the camera power. So overall, I think that the Canon SL2 is a super cool and fun camera for vlogging. You know, you could see the results from the footage in this video. And I also think that it's a great camera just for YouTube videos in general, especially for being user friendly and also pretty budget. You know, this body comes in at $550 at the launch of the camera here in the US, I think $700 with the included kit lens. And for what you're getting, it's a pretty good value and that price will probably drop over time. Now, are there any downsides to it? Absolutely, you know, if you wanted 4K, it only has 1080p 60 frames a second and so you would need to get a different camera. But I think for most people, you're probably maybe not gonna shoot in 4K and they probably don't wanna daily vlog or vlog a lot in 4K footage unless they have the capability to edit it. So if you wanted 4K, you definitely need a different camera. And then there's a lot of cameras that have a lot of newer features like in-body image stabilization and um, higher frame rates for slow motion. But when you find a lot of those features, you're also paying 
twice the price at least on um, those other cameras. So I think for just a solid, dependable, user-friendly camera for just run and gun, YouTube videos, and even vlogging, I think the SL2 is definitely worth considering. But the question of the day is, what do you think? What do you think about this footage? What do you think about the SL2? How do you think it compares to other cameras out there? Let me know in the comments section. And remember, some of the best tips and feedback come from you, the Think Media community. So definitely connect with everybody in the comments section. So thanks for checking out this video. Subscribe for more videos just like this. If you wanna see the full review of the SL2, I'll link it up right there. If you wanna check out another Think Media video, you can check that out right here. Until next time, Think Media is bringing you the best tips and tools for building your influence with online video. Keep crushing it and we will talk soon. Talk about